Mikey. I'm back with another Disney video for you guys. It just makes me so happy to talk about Disney. So today I'm going to be sharing some information about driving to Disney versus flying to Disney. I've gotten that question a lot over the years. People have wanted to know, do we ever fly? Why do we drive now? Which, don't, which one do we prefer? And kind of the ins and outs of driving to, to Disney. So if you guys want to hear kind of my thoughts on driving versus flying and why we drive now to go to Disney every year, then stay tuned. So I've got a bunch of notes here. I'm going to try to kind of keep it in a pros and cons in the beginning of what we liked about flying, what we like about driving, and then the cons of those things. And then I'll kind of share with you at the end some kind of things to think about if you're going to drive to Disney, some things you're going to want to think about and plan for. So going back to the beginning, the first um, probably four or five, maybe six times we went to Disney, we did fly. We only had one child at that point. Um, we started taking her every, we started taking her to Disney when she was two and then we took her every year after that um, until her younger sister was born. And we, I think one year we went twice. So we flew because it was cheaper. It wasn't that expensive at the time to go, you know, with just one child and two adults. It wasn't that expensive. And, you know, it does get you there quicker, which is nice. That's, you know, for us, it's about a two hour flight if there's no connections or anything, just two hours straight ish to get from where we live to Orlando. Um, so that's really nice because my husband only gets a set amount of days he can take off of work at a time. So you have much less travel time when you fly down and you fly back. So that's really nice. Um, there were some tricky things at that time because we did have a stroller and we did want to have a car when we were on Disney property because we don't really utilize any of the Disney transportation like the buses or anything. So we wanted to have a car so we would still have to rent a car when we got down there so we had to either bring her a car seat or rent one from the rental car company. Um, we would have to bring her stroller in the airport. We would gate check it that way we would have use of it if we had a, like a layover or a connection. Um, so there's a lot of ins and outs of things to think about when you're flying with a child and then what you're going to do when you get there. Are you going to rent a car? Are you going to need a car seat? Are you going to need to rent a stroller? You know, all of those things. Um, but, you know, overall, it wasn't that expensive. It did get us there faster. And with a young child, it was really nice to not have a huge amount of time in the car. The cons of flying for us now, it's more expensive because we are a family of four. Um, they have changed a lot of the guidelines with liquids and things you're allowed to bring, the amount of suitcases you're allowed to bring, how much those suitcases can weigh. And you guys have seen my packing videos. I'm not a light packer. I like to bring a lot of stuff. That way I'm prepared for pretty much anything. But if I was flying, it would be really hard for me to do that without having to pay a lot of extra money in luggage fees. So that's another thing that has changed that kind of keeps us driving because it is going to be a lot more expensive for us to fly. And then, like I said, we do like to have a car at our disposal when we're at Disney. So then on top of the luggage fees and the airline fees for four people, we would also have to rent a car when we got down there. And my youngest daughter is still in a booster seat. So she would either have to have one rented down in Disney or we would have to bring hers with us. And it would just be a lot of trouble and a lot of money when I really don't feel like, you know, maybe we get there faster, but I feel like it's a lot of extra expense and headache that we don't really have to have if we drive. So that is really when we started driving was, um, I believe my youngest daughter, well, I guess she was two because she's never flown and we took her her first time when she was two. So we did, I was scared to death. The first year we drove with a two year old, at, the, at that time I had a two year old and an eight year old and that was really scary for me to, to take that drive with a two-year-old because it's about a 13-hour drive for us from where we live to get to Disney. So I was scared, but I tried to prepare as much as possible with snacks and getting out and taking breaks and then packing things in the car for them to be entertained with. Um, that really did help. And once I made that initial trip, because when my husband first brought up driving, I was like, you are crazy. You're going to drive all that way with two kids, one of which is a two-year-old. But it really wasn't bad at all. And once I learned that, I realized how much easier for us it is to drive. Obviously, if you live farther away, it may not be an, an option that you have. But if you're in the driving area, you know, even if it's a two-day trip and you have to stop along the way, you know, you have to decide what is a drivable distance for you because that may automatically count out driving altogether. You know, if you live in Texas, you're probably not going to drive to Orlando, Florida. But if you live, you know, around me or maybe a little farther north than me, you know, you're probably going to be okay with driving, especially if you take turns or stop in the middle of the night and, you know, stay at a hotel, you know, whatever it is. So, um, obviously that's the first thing to take into consideration that 
that location is a huge factor in whether or not you're going to want to drive. But like I said, our location is not too bad. I mean, yes, it's 13 hours, but again, you know, the way we do it, I feel like it works out just as well as flying. And it's a lot less money and it's a lot less headache, honestly. Um, but like I said, after we made that first trip with a two year old, I realized, you know, Hey, this is not that bad. You know, we can make it in the car. They were really good. And we just kind of kept them busy and entertained and well fed. Um, and so that was really what started this whole trend of driving. So that's why my youngest daughter has never been on an airplane. We drive to Disney now every year. And now thinking back about flying, I can't imagine flying and trying to, you know, pack all the stuff that we need for our family, but then, you know, get everything on the air, pack everything that we need and everything that just seems so stressful to me. So, so the good things about driving for us is obviously it's much cheaper. It costs us maybe $400 round trip for gas. To drive there and back. Um, we do have to usually get an oil change before we go. We usually get the tires rotated, but any all of that stuff combined is not anywhere nearly as expensive as flying would be, unless we took one of those like really discount airlines. Um, and I can pack what I want. You know, nobody can stop me from packing too much stuff. I don't have to pay if I bring too much stuff. You know, it's just a hassle that I have to unpack it if we didn't use it. Other than that though, nobody cares what I pack and I can do what I want and not have to worry about it. So that is a huge benefit for me. And then also, like I said, we do like to have a car when we're at Disney because we don't use the Disney transportation. So we already have a car. We don't have to rent a car. We already have ours. Now there are some cons to driving a car, especially now because Disney did just roll out. If you're staying at a Disney resort and you're parking your car there overnight, you do have to pay a nightly parking fee. That is something they started last year in 2018. I feel like it's an unfortunate change they made, but it is something you have to take into consideration. If you're bringing your own car, you are gonna have to pay a nightly fee if you stay on Disney property. And it varies whether or not you're staying at a value, a moderate or a deluxe resort. Um, but that is an extra expense they're gonna tack on to your um, bill at the end when you check out. You do have to pay to park if you have your own vehicle, unless you have a valid handicap uh, pass everybody else has to pay to park at their resort. So that's unfortunate. Another thing to consider if you're gonna be driving to Disney, if you're not staying at a Disney resort, you are gonna to have to pay to park at the theme park. So, um, so let's say you're staying off Disney property. You're not staying at a Disney resort, but you're gonna drive into the parks each day. Without that, without being a Disney resort guest, you will have to pay to, the, to park at the theme parks every day, you know, once one fee per day. So you can pay to, pay to park at Magic Kingdom Maybe later you want to go to Epcot. You're not going to have to pay twice. You just pay that one fee per day, but it is an added expense that you're going to have to figure in. It may also be something that you think, well, if I'm going to have to pay to park at the theme parks, if I don't stay at a Disney resort, maybe let's look at staying on Disney property. You know, you do have to, you do get free theme park parking if you're a Disney resort guest, but then you have to pay to park at the resorts. So you'd really have to do the math there and balance out what's the best for you. Um, and I'll try to link the websites below where it tells you the parking the parking prices. I don't want to tell you now because if someone's watching this video two years from now and those rates have changed, they're going to say, well, she said it was blah, 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 you know. So I'll try to link the Disney websites where it tells how much it costs each night to park at the resort and to park at the theme parks. That way you can really make your best decision. But for us, we do still stay on Disney property. We know going in now, we are gonna have to pay to park at the resort each night, but we do get free parking at the theme park. So it kind of balances out in a way. So other things to think about, even if you fly to Disney or if you drive, but you just don't wanna take the Disney, you just don't wanna take your car to the Disney theme parks. Maybe you feel like it's gonna be easier to take Disney transportation. I have some thoughts on that and some other alternatives for ways to get around the Disney parks. The first thing is there are a lot of resorts and waterways that are connected and parks as well. So there are actually what they call water taxis between certain resorts and certain theme parks that you can take to get from your resort to a theme park. So I will have the, the website for that link below where you can look at all the different resorts that are connected to parks by water because a water taxi is an option for you. Also, the big one is the Disney buses. There are Disney buses that take you everywhere back and forth all day long from early morning until late at night. They will go to your resort, they will go to the parks and back and forth to Disney Springs, all of these different places. However, you do wanna take into consideration that sometimes those Disney buses are making several stops before they get to where you need to go. So that can be a huge factor in whether or not you want to drive and or rent a car 
um, because you may not want to be at the mercy of the Disney buses when you want to go you know, back to your resort at the end of the night. You may not want to stand in line to wait for a bus. You may not want to have to stop at several other people's stops before you get to your stop. You know, maybe your kid had a meltdown and they're tired or you're tired or someone's sick. We really just never wanted to be at the mercy of those buses because I feel like it does take a lot of time out of your vacation. Waiting for a bus, being on the bus, stopping at all the stops. You know, some bus stops have more than others. Um, but still, it's a big time investment to make to take the Disney buses. So yes, they're free and they're very convenient as far as that goes. But it is a time, it is time that you're taking away from your trip and time is money at Disney. So that's just something to consider about whether or not you want to drive so you'll have your own car or whether you want to fly but rent a car when you get to Disney because it is a little bit of a chore to get around the parks. And it's not easy to drive there either. You do still have to drive and then take the tram from the parking lot to the front of the park and then get in. You know, there is an, a, um, a time investment there as well. But for us, I feel like it's a lot easier and it's a lot quicker and less stressful to be able to take our car, go to whatever park we want, ride the tram, get in the park, and then at night we just ride the tram back to the parking lot, find our car, and go to the resort. So something to think about um, just to consider that those bus lines, you know, you're not going necessarily straight to your location. You do have to usually go through several stops before you get to yours. Another thing to remember if you are flying is that Disney does offer Magical Express, which is a free bus service that will pick you up at the airport. They'll take your luggage for you and everything and take you directly to your Disney resort. Now you do have to be staying on Disney property um, to be able to take advantage of Magical Express, but it is a really nice service that they offer if you're staying on Disney property. It is a free service they offer and it will take a little bit of the stress out of an airport experience for you if you take Magical Express. There's also a couple different options within the Disney Resort that you can take to get to and from different places if you're not driving your own car. The first one is a minivan, which you may have seen these cute little like SUV vans that are red with the white polka dots. Those will take you to different locations on Disney property that you want to go. They're not free, you do have to pay for those, so that's something you have to decide if it's in your budget and you want to pay for those minivans instead of renting a car or driving or taking the bus you will have to pay for that. Obviously, there's also taxis and lift services, so you can do any of those things to get around the Disney parks, but none of those things are free. There's also a monorail system, which will run between the Contemporary, the Grand Floridian, the Polynesian, Magic Kingdom, and Epcot. There is a change in between Magic Kingdom and Epcot. You would have to get off one monorail and get on a different monorail. Um, but they are still relatively connected. The monorail does not run between every resort and every theme park, so it would only be certain resorts and certain theme parks. So that is something you'll have to take into consideration if you plan on utilizing the monorail system. Also, you may have heard that Disney is currently in the process of building the Disney Skyline or gondola system, which is basically like a Skylift kind of cable car that will connect Hollywood Studios and Epcot to four resort hotels, Art of Animation, Disney's Pop Century, and Disney's Caribbean Beach, as well as a 15th Disney Vacation Club property called the Disney Riviera Resort. So you will have that as an option. It's not an option right now, but it is another way to get around Disney property. Um, so those are just some other things to think about and consider. So in a nutshell, I really think as much as I was hesitant at first to drive because it is a long way and we do have kids and it's just, you know, it does take some time out of your vacation, but I feel like we've pretty much mastered it. I get, I usually share with you guys what we put in the, the girl's car bags to keep them entertained. Um, our car also came with DVD players, so they usually watch a few movies, but I'm very like adamant about them not watching movies the whole time. Um, and then also we usually leave late at night uh, my husband usually works the day we leave. He'll work, he'll come home, he'll take a nap. You know, me and the girls like finish things up, try to go to bed. I'm not sure anybody goes to sleep. And then we usually get up around 11 or 12 and drive to Disney. So we're usually at Disney by 12 or one o'clock the next day if there haven't been any like issues with traffic or anything. So most of the time we're driving down there is at night, which is really nice because the girls are usually sleepy. So they will usually sleep quite a bit of the way. Um, you know, make a few stops for gas, get out and stretch, have a snack. Usually the sun will be coming up and we'll eat breakfast. And then by that point is when I'll usually say, you know, you, go, you all go ahead and look in your car bags. Um, and now that the sun is up and you can actually see what's in them, look in your car bags, they play with their toys, they eat, you know, they watch movies. And it's just a really, it's not bad at all, really. The worst part of it is coming home 
because by that point, the entire trip home is in the daytime. So the sun's up the whole time. Nobody really can sleep very well. We're all pretty tired. And we've been together for an entire week. So the drive home, even though it's not bad at all, it's not as easy to get home as it is to go to Disney. Because, you know, you're going home. Vacation's over. But that's just kind of my thought on it. I feel like... Um, for us, driving makes the most sense, both logistically and financially, and just kind of how I prefer to do it now. Um, but I thought I would share that with you guys. I think that answers pretty much all of the combinations of questions I've gotten about why we fl why we drive and did we ever fly and kind of how to get around Disney property. Do we rent a car? Do we bring our own car? You know, I get those questions a lot. So I feel like this kind of answers all of those questions, and hopefully it was helpful. And like I said, I will have those links for you guys in the description box of all of the information I can find about pricing to park at the resort, to park at the theme parks. Um, I think I said something else I was going to link and I've already forgotten. Um, and I'll also link my Disney playlist for you guys. Every Disney video I've ever made is in that playlist. So packing, planning, tips and tricks, what's in the girls car packs that we put in the car, um, going to Disney with kids and how to save money on Disney vacation. All of those videos are in my Disney playlist. So I will link those below for you guys. And let me know. I'm kind of curious to know if you guys have been to Disney, when was your first trip to Disney? Or when was your most recent trip to Disney? And if you haven't been to Disney, do you ever plan to go? Or if not, where do you all go on your family vacations? If you guys want to leave those kind of answers in the comments for me, I would be excited to read all of your responses and get back to you. So thank you so much for that in advance and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.